Okay. Um, I yeah, I think it, we're good to get started. It's one o'clock by my phone, and I see that the participants have seemed to slow down a little bit. I'm going to take just a second to go over the technical housekeeping issues as well. Um, so if you do have audio issues, you may not want to be using a phone as well as a computer. And we've also noticed over the town halls that some people really have a problem with headphones. So you may want to, if you are having technical issues, you may want to look at logging out and logging back in and whether or not you have a different way of listening in other than headphones. Also, if you have Q and A's, just please go ahead and put those questions into the question feature and not the chat feature. That makes it a lot easier and submit it to everyone uh, so everyone can see your questions. Please be mindful of PHI or um, any personal information you may have in the questions. We don't want to get anybody in trouble here, so make sure you're not submitting any of that information to the Q&A section. Like all town hall meetings, this one will also be posted along with today's uh, recording and tomorrow night's recording, tomorrow evening's recording at 6 o'clock. So you, there's no need to take pictures of any of the slides or really to um, frantically be trying to capture the information on the slides. Because guys, we make this all fully available to you. We're really just appreciative of your time and your participation in these town halls and in the EVV process as we try and get into compliance with the federal mandate for electronic visit verification. Okay, my name's Brian Dowd. If I didn't say that at the beginning, I do apologize. I am the Deputy Executive Director of our Policy Operations and Compliance. I am also the business owner for electronic visit verification and have been working on EVV for roughly about three years now, even a little bit more than that. I think I've been saying I've been working on it for three years for at least six months now, so I'm probably more than three years at this point. We always like to start all of our presentations at the Department of Community Health with the mission of the, of the agency, which is to provide Georgians with access to affordable quality health care through effective planning, purchasing, and oversight. So what are we going to go over today? We're, we've been holding out these um, town hall meetings in September and October to go over basically what we feel like we have heard from you all that you need the most um, follow-up on and the most opportunity for clarifications. So we're going to give you what I've promised to do for the last couple of months, which is just a member update that is specific to self-direction or participant direction. We're gonna do a project update for EVV overall. We're gonna show you where those training resources are again, because we're getting a lot of questions about training, which makes perfect sense. We're, getting, we're gonna go over some common issues or questions. We're gonna talk about the future town halls we have coming up. We're gonna give you that third party EVV vendor update, which I know from my own personal email box and cleaning out the EVV email box this morning, that's a hot topic. And then we're going to have a Q&A period as time permits. So first, let's do our EVV member update. So the first thing we want to talk about is for self-directed or participant-directed individuals, and we did have gotten feedback from you guys that we call self-directed, participant-directed, and some other programs. And um, it's all the same thing for us. We're talking about those folks who use a fiscal intermediary and hire their own staff. So we have extended the deadline for the fiscal intermediaries and self-directed members to, to November 1st, 2021 for the mandatory claims edit. This only applies to self-directed or participant-directed members who are using one of the state's FIs, which are now two FIs, and we'll talk about that in just a minute. Um, and we're doing this to allow individuals some additional time who, to be trained on their new fiscal intermediaries EVV solution and operational process. Again, this only applies to self-directed members. We are fully expecting the mandatory claims edit to go in place for traditional providers at the end of the month as of October 1st, 2021. If you are a self-directed or participant-directed member and you are currently supported by public partnership 
LLC or what we call PPL and you're and you are waiting to get trained or start using EDV, you should be contacted by a PPL representative or support coordination or perhaps both to discuss alternative service options to PPL. PPL is no longer going to be a fiscal intermediary in the state of Georgia. They have decided that they no longer want to be one of our FIs, which means that if in order to continue with self-direction or participant direction, you will need to switch to one of the fiscal intermediaries that remains, which are Acumen and Continuum. And they are all very much aware that there will be this transition and they are working with the Department of Behavioral Health and Developmental Disabilities. There's just slightly over 100 members who are supported by PPL. We do have spreadsheets and, and contact information of each of those members. And our department, DCH, and especially DBHDD, is working very intently with support coordination and these members to ensure that they can be transitioned over. Um, they are, that is another reason why we have given that deadline bump to fiscal intermediary to November 1st, 2021. We are wanting to make sure that you guys have time to transition to your new fiscal intermediary and get set up. Again, we do have biweekly meetings with the fiscal intermediaries and sometimes right now we're pretty much doing them weekly just to ensure that their implementation for EDV is going smoothly and that this transition from PPL for the 100 a little more than 100 members is going um, well. So I'm going to pause at this point and just let self-directed members know, as always, you're welcome to stay for the rest of the presentation. We welcome you to be part of everything, but the rest of the presentation is going to be specific to um, traditional providers or very targeted traditional providers. And also, this presentation does contain all the same contact information for the DCH EBV mailbox, as well as the um, TELUS or NetSmart. I'm going to try and use NetSmart, not TELUS, the NetSmart EBV solution as well. So we also provide you guys with uh, contacts, not only for the two fiscal intermediaries who will be continuing on, but for public partnership if you have questions for them as far as the transition. And again, these phone numbers and email contacts will be contained in this presentation and that'll be posted online and they are in last month's presentation as well so there's no need for you to wait for this one to post you can go into last month's presentation and pull down this contact information all right one other thing i want to go over um, that we have had a lot of questions about from members um, is georgia lifeline uh, so a ways back uh, we let you guys know that Medicaid members, waiver members, and GAP members are eligible for a free smartphone. And that free smartphone is the Lifeline, GA Lifeline phone. There are other companies, but the ones that we have been working with, um, specific to EDV, is Georgia Lifeline, and this is their website. They're a federally sponsored program which provides smartphones for Medicaid members. There is no cost to the phone. You get unlimited calling and unlimited text with the phone. And that includes that so that you can make doctor's appointments or manage your health record like so many other people do with their phones, that it becomes a crucial part of your healthcare system. And because of that, the phone is free, including calls and text. There is a set amount of data on your phone that you can use. It's not unlimited data, but EVV is exempt from data collection for the Georgia Lifeline phone. So if you have one of these phones and you're a member and your caregiver is using your phone to clock in and clock out for EVV, that will not count against your free data minutes for your smartphone. It's exempt data for the Georgia Lifeline program, which is a great benefit to our members. So let's say your workers don't have phones, you don't have a landline to apply for IVR, you could get one of these Georgia Lifeline phones. You can put it right next to the door or right next to your bed or wherever you know it's going to be. And then as your workers come in, they would open the app. They would put their unique login in and their unique password, and they would be able to use this phone to clock in and clock out. 
Again, there are other free smartphones that are out there. We have been told from you guys that those smartphones, free smartphones, do not all support the Mobile Caregiver Plus app. We do know the GA Lifeline phones do support the app. So if you get a free phone from Georgia Lifeline, you can operate EDD off of that free phone. All right, let's talk about some project updates now. Hold on one sec. I got a throat's a little dry. Hold on one sec. Okay, where are we? So we are past the July 23rd mandatory registration date. I'm very happy to say that almost, I think we're at about 90% of providers, 88 to 90% of providers who are impacted by EDD is registered. We got past the August 31st, 2021 successfully submit one claim per ID. We are looking at that right now because it does appear that there are several of providers who has of yet have not submitted a claim. And we're looking at putting some providers on prepayment review as of next week. October 1st, 2021, which is just two, three weeks away at this point, is our mandatory claims processing date for traditional providers. And that means that we will put an edit onto GAMIS that prevents any billing to go through GAMIS and it must go through EDD for personal support services and community living support services. The codes that we have on the front of our web page, our, our, our internet page for EDD processing. So that's our October 1st deadline. That's what we're marching for. Let me say this, because I've gotten this question a lot. If you have an open ticket with EDD for something that is outside of your control, it's not something that you are responsible for. It's not a training issue. It's not a registration issue. It is something that our solution, our EDD solution has opened up a ticket for and on that ticket, they have said, this is our fault. We're trying to figure it out. We will continue to override those claims through GAMIS so that you can get paid past October 1st. But you have to have an open ticket for that for us to know that it is truly not, the, that it is truly the department's issue with assuring that your claims are appropriately processed. If you have not, registered and submit on a claim for put, uh, applicable provider ID, you need to do so as soon as possible. Many of you all have been emailing the EDD Medicaid mailbox to let me know, hey, I was a little late, but I got my claim submitted. And that's very helpful because it lets us know, okay, let's re reduce this person off the prepayment review action. So again, if you have not registered and submitted a claim for each ID, at least one claim, Please do so this week so that we can be assured that you don't go on prepayment review or open a ticket as we previously discussed. Next big update is about case management. Case management EDD functionality will be available this Thursday, September 16th. We're in the process of getting out communication to all case management agencies. Registration and access to the EVD administrative dashboard is optional for case management agencies, but this, the, the dashboard will provide you a real time look and, and sometimes it's not real time. It may be once a day, but a, a fairly up to date view into what's going on with your specific members. Are there, is there case, is there um, PSS or CLS company? Um, delivering services on time? Are they utilizing the information and the units that are appropriate in their prior authorization and in their plan of care? So it's very important for the case management agencies to use this in order as a tool in their toolbox to really increase their members' health and well being. You're going to register as a case management administrator and you're going to use the same process that our traditional providers use, you're just gonna have a view only link into what's going on. So again, we're gonna have guides, trainings, and, and checklists that will be available as soon as later this week. And we're gonna be using our DCH EDV listserv to announce all of the different 
uh, case management functionality as it becomes available to you. So again, just what will it include? It will include view only access for data linked to your members and just specifically to your members for schedule visits, prior authorizations. It will allow reports for visits, completed, not scheduled, detail reports, and you're gonna have the ability to send and receive messages to and from your aides and caregivers. So they would be able to message you and say, hey, um, Mrs. Smith has gone into the hospital. I showed up at the house today. She's gone into the hospital. That's really important because that case manager needs that information to assess the plan of care and say, okay, Mrs. Smith is in the hospital. When she comes out of the hospital, is she going to need more support? Is she going to need more personal support hours? Is she going to need DME or equipped uh, technology to help with um, ambulation or some other equipment to help her throughout her day. It's very, very important that we can get a greater communication between frontline staff and the case management entities. All right, I briefly want to go over EVV training. I've gone over this before, so I'm not going to dwell on it. But if you are a provider using the NetSmart EVV system, you need to be doing these things on the left. Administra and the administrator at each office or each number, and it could be the same person for multiple offices, needs to register for and complete the administrative console training, the mobile application training, and the claim console training. Aides who don't do administrative functions, the folks in the field who are working with our members, they really only need to register and complete the mobile application training. It'll give them everything they need. If you have chosen to use a third party system, you still need to register for and complete the claims console trainings. But your aides don't need to do the NetSmart caregiver training for the mobile application because they're going to need to be working with the third party that you've chosen for training on how to clock in and clock out and use their app. All the training for the NetSmart EVV solution is available at this website. So you can go on and get administration console webinars, claims console, mobile application webinars, extra topic webinars. There is a weekly scheduled live training webinar that happens every week that is just one-on-one -on -one Q and A for an hour. You get to ask whatever you want to the TELUS folks and they'll respond. Those, I have heard that those trainings are not very well attended so if you have things you need to learn and you need one on one training, I'm going to really encourage you to um, take advantage of this weekly Q&A session we have for you. And we also have a ton of pre recorded webinars that you can review at your convenience. If you have a question that training does not cover, you can ask NetSmart during that live Q&A session we just talked about. And this is how you register for it down here. It's the live Q&A session. You get some other states and what they're doing above that, but the Q&A session is for all states. Also, once you've registered for the NetSmart solution, you have access to user, gu user guides and short refresher videos. If you go over to your on your left to your dashboard, in the administrative portal, there's a little section that goes into training. Those user guides could be printed out, or you could just watch them to give you an update. I have seen all of the refresher videos. They work very well for me because they're not long. They're between like eight and 15 minutes and they're easy for me to really pay attention to. So I would really, really encourage you to go in. It's everything from how do I change my password to how do I do scheduling? All right, let's talk about some common issues and questions real quick. Retroactive billing. I get a lot of questions about, you know, I have a new member and they don't have a PA yet. You could, if this member is known to the system and it's got the members out there, but there's not a PA, a current PA, you can still schedule visits with the EVV solution. It's just that the EVV claim will come up unmatched until we have a current PA. If the client has not yet been approved by DFAX or by whatever the authorizing agency is for the services, 
you're going to need to record stuff on paper until that GAMIS PA, the Georgia Medicaid Management Information System PA, hits that system. Because once it hits the Gainwell Gamma system, then it comes over to the EVD system. So until that GAMIS claim hits, you need to be recording stuff on paper. If it has been a week and that PA has been sitting out there on GAMIS for a week, and it's still not making it over to EVD, you need to contact the EVD call center and give them the GAMIS PA number so they can track down that PA. Okay, so the state does, and this is another part of this, I just went over this, we do, but I do wanna let you know, we do auto load members from GAMIS to EVD on a nightly basis. So please know those are coming over regularly we just need to know if it's been like a week, you need to call that call center and we'll give you the call center information. <clears throat> I'm getting a lot of questions right now about family caregiving. I probably answered 20 or so in the last 10 days. And um, it's important to know that we did expand to family caregivers in the Appendix K, which was our public health emergency declaration for expansion of services in home and community-based services. So nothing has changed about that Appendix K authorization. It is still in place for the public health emergency. We plan on telling folks 90 days out when we know that it's the public health emergency is going to be uh, ended, we will do the same communication to our members to give you guys more than ample time to make any sort of arrangements that are necessary. Third party integration, we're going to go over where the third party um, integrations are at this point <clears throat> in just a minute. Um, but it's really important that you are able to talk with your third party vendor to talk to them about where they are in the integration process, making sure that they will hit the 10 1 deadline to have claims cut over. Um, I do want to let you guys know. The TELUS system is open to you to use at any time. So if you do make a decision, because I get this question quite a bit lately, um, that I'm not going to use this third party I was going to use anymore. Is it okay for me to use the TELUS system? Yes. The TELUS system is free of charge. And like I've been saying back since the first meeting in, uh, in November of last year, the, the EVV NetSmart Telus system, the state of Georgia has made available to you to use at no charge. You can switch over to that Telus system at any time. We just also made it available that you could have third party integration if you want. We were not one of those states that said you must use our system or you must go out and pay for your own system. We provided options and say, hey, whatever you want to do, you are able to do. Third party is subject to the October 1st, 2021 mandatory claims edit, just like every other provider. So you really do need to be checking with them. I've gotten a handful of questions um, in the last week or so that have asked me to contact your third party EVD vendors. I'm not going to do that because I don't have a relationship with your third party vendor. I have a relationship with our third party vendor, which is the NetSmart Telus system. But when you enter a relationship with that third party, <coughs> excuse me, that became for you to manage with your third party. Now, if you have a question, concern, or comment about NetSmart, the one that I have a contractual relationship with, I'll be more than happy to answer that through the EVV website. But I'm not going to negotiate or talk to your chosen third party providers. That's something you're going to have to do as the contract holder for that. This is just a graphic representation of how third party EVV vending works. And we're going to leave this up for you. Um, it's basically they're using their system. The solution goes to the state EVV system. And then the information is passed back and forth between the third party, the state EVV solution, the state EVV solution here in three checks everything to make sure it's okay. Then you as the provider manages the release of the claims to GAMIS, it's paid, and that information goes back to you guys to pay the caregivers and to use for your agency. 
So there's just an extra step with that third party information where it goes from the third party to EDD and then through the administrative dashboard, you all submit those comments. Okay, do you need support? I'm going to encourage you to utilize the call center, which is 833-701-0012, or the email, which is listed here. They also have a chat, so you can go directly on and chat to a human being through their website for chat. A lot of times folks will send me emails to the EDD mailbox, and that is perfectly fine, but nine times out of 10, I am copying the, the, the Georgia EVD call center and asking them to respond to you. So even though I'm com as of 10 this morning, I was completely caught up with the EVD mailbox and the IVR mailbox. There are no more outstanding IVR requests for the state. You will remove a step if you go ahead and contact the call center directly. All right, upcoming town halls. Again, there's the one we're in right now. There's the one that's tomorrow at 6 p.m. And we're doing another town hall on September 28th, right before the 10-1 go live. We are doing a specific case management support coordination town hall Monday, September 27th at 3 to 4 p.m. In October, we will be doing some town halls very early in the month. And the reason we're doing that is to get your Q&A and make sure that we're staying in front of any issues we have with the mandatory claims act. Here is the big slide that I get. Oh wait, let me go back. I get questions on this two or oh, it's it's moving forward. Um, that I get questions on this two or three times a week now. I get um, where are we with alternate EVV vendors, right? Hold on a second. I just got a chat message that folks can't hear me. Can somebody verify that you can still hear me? I can hear you fine, Brian. Okay, great. Thank you. That's what I needed. Um, okay, so people can't hear me. Thanks, guys. I, I just wanted to make sure. I really appreciate y'all letting me know. So this is one that I get a lot. Oh, I got a thumbs up. I've never seen that before. That's kind of cool. Um, so this is a really, really important one that a lot of people ask me about. If you've been with us since November, you will remember the days when all these people in production were over in contracting or initial contact established. As you can see, we now have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 23 third party vendors in full production, which means they are good to go. They have done all their testing. They are fully integrated. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So another 10 or 33 third party vendors who are in pilot or in production. And in pilot means we're passing data fast and forth, we're utilizing the system, but we're just not in a place where we're full on in production. That is pretty impressive. That's all 33 third party vendors in pilot or in production. We've got four more that have started the testing process, but we're not all the way in pilot or production. And then we've got five more that uh, are in development. We've got a few here that we're still working with in contracting or initial contact, but we're almost at 33 third parties fully in production with 23 already in production. That is a huge number of third party providers. Now, again, over here on the left are declined integrations. And there's there's quite a quite a few of them here now. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. There's 10 that have declined integration. And I'm gonna say if you are using any of these 10, you would need to consider using the Telus system or one of these third parties that um, are in production, in pilot, or in testing or development, whichever you're comfortable with. Because <clears throat> effective October 1st, the declined integration folks will simply not work with the mandatory claims act. So you got a lot to choose from here. And again, you can always choose the NetSmart 
sponsored system, which is free of charge. Okay, so now I'm going to take a little, a little break. We were able to get through with that in exactly 30 minutes. I'm going to take a little break and so we can go over some Q&A questions. But again, I want to leave up the Georgia call center number. Um, and I want to leave up their, their email address as well. So let me get a little look here at the Q&As and let me make sure I can pull it up. I think I can, I can. Hold on one second for me, guys. First question, is it normal for the administration staff to not have access to view the schedule on the mobile app? Um, well, the administration staff won't have the same view as the mobile app, but you still should have access to the actual schedule information. But again, you won't have the mobile information because that is definitely for the caregivers. Is there a list of known issues with TELUS? We had an issue with units calculating incorrectly, and it turns out it is a bug already known to tell us. Is there a record of known of what bugs can be provided to us? So we do have a tracking mechanism for all tickets. We can, there's not an overall listing of tickets. There are some major things that we have open um, issues with that we are very confident will be resolved by the end of the month. Um, I'll, I'll go back and look and see what the units in calculating incorrectly is. I do wanna let folks know, as I've talked about for the last couple of months, we will be using Medicare rounding rules. So that is getting ready to be put into production here in the next couple of weeks. And we will be providing um, communication about the Medicare rounding rules as well. The temporary rates are not in the telesystem. Yes, that has been communicated to us multiple times. You do have the ability to adjust those rates in the telesystem. So you could go in and put in those adjusted rates, but we are working to get that rate increase fixed. Um, we keep getting the code for shared critical PSA scheduled with overlapping members or are able to be matched. We are aware of that. It's something that is an open ticket. Thank you. PA exists on the solution, but not in the work list for all the service days. Some days that have PA, some days PA is missing. What do we do? Call center notified is not resolving. Well, you can send that issue to me at the EVV mailbox and I'll research and clearly identify where the issue is. How will the claims process for clients in the community care services program that have a member cost share responsibility? Example, I'm aware of PSS. I mean, I'm aware of, of cost share. I started as a DFACS member, so I'm not going to read the whole question. That will continue to be managed just like it's managed now out of GAMS. So it's not all the EVV system is doing is capturing clock in and clock out and sending that information over to GAMS. GAMS will continue to select out the, the, the client cost share or their you know, uh, member liability, as we used to call it in the old days for us. And then it will pay out, GAMUS will continue to pay out once that cost share is gone. So nothing changes about cost share because of EVV. EVV is simply capturing clock in and clock out and sending those units over to GAMUS, which will continue to calculate the patient liability. If we, re if we release visits all throughout the week, we'll receive payments in a separate claim ICN, or will the system compile everything throughout the week and return in one ICN for visits released for one individual? Um, we're gonna have to look and see how that is happening now, and we'll return that back. I don't know if it's gonna go in one ICN or if it's gonna be out in separate ICN. So we, we can have that research. We have lots and lots of people that are submitting multiple claims and all of their claims through the system right now. So we can certainly track that back and let you know how it's gonna be captured. How will we approach issues when we are unable to build due to the case manager not correctly entering SAFs or PAs in a timely manner? The same way you do now. So you're going to have to get back with the case management company and you're gonna to have to talk to them about the fact that you need that PA put into the system 
And in the meantime, you'll have to capture that information in paper. And when the PA is set up, now, if it's a known person to the system, like we talked about before, you can go ahead and schedule that visit and it will just come up unmatched. So when the PA comes in, it will flow automatically through. But if this is a totally new member and EVV doesn't know about it, you'll have to capture that information on paper until the PA and the member has shown up in EVV. Are there training videos for our actual software integrated with TELUS? That's something you're really going to have to go back and ask your third party about. Um, I don't know whether you know your system has your third party system has training videos. Um, I don't know what Access Care uses, um, but the Telus system definitely does have trainings. It has administrative portal trainings and claim release trainings and videos on all those things that you are welcome to go in and use. Please just utilize the links and the, the sites that are on um, this website. When, a care, when the caregiver uses EVV, they don't need to write the timesheet. What kind of record do we need to print out? Um, so I, I'm not sure what that question is, but I'll tell you this. Anything that's captured in EVV, you do not need to continue to capture on paper. If it's something that EVV doesn't capture, like you need a supervisory signature, then you would need to print it out and do like a, a nursing signature or document that signature somewhere else. What happens when it's saying unmatched and the time and the PA is the same as what TELUS have? I have emailed the PA, no response yet. You need to call the call center. Um, the call center should be able to walk you through that or an open a ticket. When they open a ticket and they get a resolution for your individual issue, they do contact you back about what that is. Is visit verification being enforced on claims? Yes. The reason uh, we're back to the cost share question again. The reason I'm asking the question for cost share is because other states do not order the dates in ascending order and grouping procedures together. How will a GAMIS accept the EVV claim info and process that out? during the weekly check ride. So what they will do is they will gather it all up for the week, send it through, subtract out the cost share, and the remainder will be paid to the provider. Can we have notification from EVV when a missing members are added as currently we notify the call center, complete the spreadsheet and wait for days when they will be added? Um, okay, so we can we can give you what we'll do is we will make sure that we put together an outline for what the processing time between GAMIS and EVV is. I will tell you this, when I get this question now, my first question back to providers is, can you please provide me with the GAMIS PA? About half the times you don't have a GAMIS PA. And then I have to tell you, well, I can't add the member into EVV until the member is added into GAMIS. But we'll write out what the time plane, what the time frame is for that, and we'll put it on the website so you will know. Um, and then it should follow that standard processing. Again, there is a nightly file that comes from GAMIS to EVV to update members, PAs, and providers into the system. A provider stated a message was received from EVV sting an issue with the PA resulting in the claim being denied. No changes had occurred in the PA and PA, who should the, the call center? If you're having issues with your PAs, I'm not really understanding what this question is. It just says, it seems to say that everything was right in the PA, but it was still getting denied. In those instances, you need to call the call center that is on the screen. Is it the case manager's responsibility to let members know about the GA lifeline for the free phone? Um, well, if I'm a case manager, my, my goal of being a case manager and why we have you is to let people know about medical, social, and other resources that are available to you. And that may be waiver services, it may be community services, it may be LIHE, so you can get your utilities paid. So I would certainly say that's definitely a toolbox and we would expect our case managers as we do with all resources that are available to our members 
to make them aware of what's going on out there that could benefit their lives. We use some member service days for test billing. Gamus denied the rest of the service days when done through Gamus. I'm not really sure what that question means. So if you wanna email me directly, we'll be happy to um, get back with you and discuss it with you. And then we can, we can get a resolution. If we release visits all throughout the week, we will receive payments in separate. So we've already answered that question. I'm not, I don't need to read that one again. How will we approach issues when we are unable to build? Okay, so we, we answered that one too. How, oh wait, I wanna make sure I didn't answer this last question. How will we approach issues when we are unable to build due to a case manager not correcting in a timely? Currently, we send those ICNs to be overridden with proof that we have been trying to get them updated. We will no longer have that option since we have no ICN. Um, so I think I need to talk to you one on one. So I'm going to make a note because we've gotten several questions here and, and I just want to kind of get a better understanding of what's going on with your provider agency, because there's some some issues here that I'm I am interested in. So we'll take note of this question and set up a one on one. So thank you for these questions. They're they're very helpful. Um, and we'll make sure that we we get back with you on those. Um, when the caregiver clocks out exceeds the scheduled times like a few seconds. Yep. That, so we're at once again getting asked about the rounding rules again. Please be patient with us. We're going to have those rounding rules out for you and they will explain how the rounding rules are done. So be rest assured we're going to use the Medicare rounding rules and that will solve your problem or at least give you the information you need to appropriately address that. Um, so I'm going to ask Brittany to make sure that that on the several questions that you make note of it so I can set up some one on one time for that. Um, I'm going to look at what's in the um, the chat box because I know we got some people who have been putting stuff in the chat box too. So I just want to make sure I'm not missing anything that hasn't been covered. Um, you so there was a question about how case management companies register. They register like any provider does on the um, Telus system, and there is training that is available for registration on our website um, you there it will be an adjustment and avoid process for claiming through EBV. if you can't get a claim through within six months how will timely override be done the same way it's done now we don't allow time we shouldn't be allowing timely overrides unless there is a justifiable reason for it being done after six months um, again I think that's answering those questions. So it will be done the same way it's done now. Let me have a little look back real quick. Um, nothing has changed uh, about the the override and adjustment um, scenarios. So let me look at Q and A real quick again. Brian, if you don't mind me just adding related to case management, um, there will be an email going out Thursday morning. If you've signed up for the EVV listserv, um, that will include a checklist on how to register and where trainings are available, sort of all the information that you'll need. So um, there, there is a checklist already available on the website, but functionality will be available on Thursday. So that's when that communication will be going out. Thank you. That's awesome. So Brittany has done some extraordinarily good checklists. Um, that can that you can use, and if you follow them, you'll be in good space. Um, so if you could just go ahead and utilize those checklists, I promise you they won't do you wrong. Um, I've had a lot of really, really positive feedback about the checklist for those folks who have used them. Okay, so I'm going to end the presentation here. I think we've gotten through the questions. I do want to encourage you all to use this call center number that is here on the board. For any specific issues you're having, the EVV mailbox is also open. <coughs> and I will be reaching out to one provider that I know of to set up a one on one to go through some of the issues because there were five or six uh, questions that came down. And I just want to provide a little one on one support to that provider 
and really get a better insight of what's happening now with um, that provider. But I want to open that up to everybody as well. You've probably heard me say that on previous emails. If you as a member or you as a provider feel like you would benefit from one on one time in talking with me, all you have to do is send an email to the EVV mailbox and I will start shooting you available times I have for a little bit of a half an hour block of time on one on one. Just to sometimes it's helpful to talk in a one on one basis so you can run through all the questions and concerns you have and knock them out. And then um, you get a, a lot more comfort with utilizing the system that way. I've probably done 100 of those in the last six months, and I've found them to be the most useful both for myself and for the person who's contacting me. So, again, I do want to encourage you if you need to do that. Um, and Brittany just put the EVV mailbox in the chat for you guys. So, with that, we're going to go ahead and close out today's town hall. I want to thank you very much for joining us today. And I hope you have a wonderful um, Tuesday. Have a good day, y'all.